and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's episode of Fossil Fridays. So I hope you're all doing well and not going too crazy from being on lockdown. I don't know if you're all on lockdown but I know the UK and France sadly is and uh, yeah it's definitely fun trying to occupy myself but uh, I'm sure you're all in the same boat so we're gonna do it together. But uh, today's episode I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how we date rocks and not in the flirty sense you know like how you doing but like literally how we date rocks we find like how do we know the ages of them what are the principles so there's quite a lot that goes into this but there's two main that's four there's two main ways that we can date them and I thought I would give you guys kind of like a breakdown and a easy overview of it at least I'm gonna try and make it easy so uh, let's give it a go so when it comes to relative dating there's a number of laws that we can use to analyze the rock outcrop we're looking at so the first one is the law of superposition now that might sound like a crazy word but all it means is that the oldest rocks are at the bottom the youngest rocks are at the top so when these rocks are laid these are the oldest ones, these are the youngest ones. And this also links to the second law, which is the principle of horizontality, which means that all these rock layers have been laid horizontal, not vertical. So they've been laid in layers like this, and we can assume that the ones here are older than the ones here. So they're the two laws. So it's not always as simple as horizontal layers, unfortunately. So sometimes these layers have gone through like tectonic activity, and you may have seen that sometimes you can see beds that are vertical. And we know that that's not possible. That's not how they were laid. That's been something that's happened to these layers after they were formed. So we can use way up indicators within the layers to work out which way was up originally. So we're trying to, if we've got layers that are vertical we need to work out if the youngest rocks are this way or the youngest rocks are this way and we can do that using a number of primary sedimentary structures so these can be things like ripple marks or desiccation uh, cracks like there's a few there's quite a few things we can use as indicators I won't get too into detail into those now because I think they'll overcomplicate the thing but way up indicators basically can help us when the rocks are inverted or steeply inclined because they're no longer horizontal so we want to get back to that original horizontal you know structure to work out the oldest to youngest but we've got to use indicators to do that so I hope that made sense. Another thing we have to take into account when we're dating rocks using relative dating is if there's a dike or an intrusion of another rock that intrusion is younger than the surrounding rock so the surrounding rock had to already exist for that intrusion to go through it so when we're looking at an outcrop if there's you know a dike or an intrusion we know that that is the younger component of that rock sequence if that makes sense so there's a few things we can just observe to work out youngest to oldest of what we're looking at and then there's also another thing we can take into account if we're looking at a layer and within this layer there's clasts of a different type of rock these clasts have been able to be reworked within this layer they must be older than the layer that they're in because they were already a layer they've been eroded turned into these little pebbles or clasts and then put into this new layer and deposited so the surrounding matrix is younger than the class within it very complicated I'm probably going into too much detail for you guys but this is just for those of you who are, who are interested so yeah the last thing I'm going to talk about in terms of relative dating is of course fossils so when you're looking at an outcrop you can take into account the fossil content but not every fossil makes a good zone fossil so for it to be a zone fossil we want it to have like either a rapid evolution or a really short kind of geological time period so we can actually if we find this fossil for it to tell us roughly what age that rock is but we also want it to be abundant and geologically widespread so you know we're not asking for a lot but if we tick all those boxes we can use the fossils and uh, give the rock we're looking at an age so fossils are really useful as well if you find the right ones <laughs> the next way we can date rocks is using absolute dating so this takes into account the radiometric data within a rock mainly igneous rocks so it can be done for sedimentary and metamorphic rocks but it's far less accurate for them so uh, what it does is it looks at the small amount of radioactive atoms found within the rocks minerals and it analyzes how many unstable parent atoms there are and also how many stable daughter atoms there are so parent atoms decay into these stable daughter atoms so the more unstable parent atoms we find the younger the rock is because it hasn't decayed into these daughter atoms and we have we know the half-life so when these parent atoms decay into the daughter atoms god i'm confusing myself here um we know that half-life so this isn't there is an issue with this absolute dating we don't get a complete accurate number but we do get a rough idea in millions of years how old the rocks are 
but it's got a probably an error margin of plus or minus a million years so you know it's not super accurate but it gives us a good idea so yeah I think I'll stop there because this one can get very complicated but you get the rough idea it's using atoms it's looking at unstable parent ones the stable daughter ones and using that relationship we can work out basically roughly the age because we know the half-life so I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a conclusion because I think that was quite complicated for you guys to follow so I hope it was okay but I really will get a whiteboard at some point in my YouTube journey so I can you know teach you guys properly and actually help you follow along with what I'm teaching but anyway long story short absolute dating takes into account the radioactive atoms within igneous rocks mainly um, and it looks at the half-lives that we already know for radioactive atoms to actually allocate a millions of years age to that igneous rock which I think is pretty cool. So we can give it a pretty accurate age, but not fully accurate. Whereas relative dating just takes into account the relationships and the laws, and we can look at all the information we have in front of us and work out what's the youngest bit, what's the oldest bit. So it's not always as simple as layers, just boom, 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 it can be, but you can also have things intruding, things being reworked, then you've got the fossil content to take into account. So it's really fun to kind of be presented with a problem in geology and piece together the ages, what's the youngest, what's the oldest. So it can be quite interesting. Hopefully at some point I will go into this in more depth, but uh, until then this will have to do. But I hope you guys found this useful. I didn't expect it to kind of get so complicated, so I hope it was okay, but let me know if it isn't and uh, I'll try and fix it in another video. But uh, I hope you're all doing well look after yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. I'll link my Instagram and Twitter down below if you'd like even more fossil related content. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.